Welcome to Kanye West Rank, the series where we rank each song off of Kanye West's various albums. Today we're going to be ranking Kanye and Jay-Z's collaboration album, Watch the Throne, released in 2011. For the record, I will also be including tracks from the deluxe version of the album. Before we begin, however, I'd like to go over a few rules. I'm going to be ranking on a 10-point scale. I won't be considering any short interludes or skits on these lists, and as always, please understand that this is my opinion. So let's get started. Up first at number 16, we have Ham with a 6.3. This is one of the songs from the deluxe version of the album. It's just sort of weird. The production is almost goofy with like little garage band sound effects. I don't know, I'm just not a fan. Next up at number 15, we have Prime Time with a 6.9. I think this song has some stuff going for it. It's got a really interesting sort of dissonant piano sample. I don't, however, like sampled ad-libs. They make it sound like a 2016 meme soundboard. The song could have been really good, but I just think it missed for me. Next to number 14, we have Who Gon' Stop Me with a 7.0. Kanye takes this song in a very interesting direction by making it an epic dubstep remix. It's very odd. I don't know. I, I don't know how I feel about it. The song also opens with the words, This is something like the Holocaust. That line, aged like milk. Up next to number 13, we have Made in America with a 7.1. I really didn't know what to make of this song when I first put it on. The first couple seconds of this sound like some garbage beat that I made on Chrome Music Lab. Thankfully, Frank Ocean's vocals come in to save the song immediately. I just don't think the production is there. Next to number 12, we have New Day with a 7.2. The piano is great in the beginning of the song. I appreciate that there's a bit of a calmer pace than most of the songs on this album. I feel like if every song is really intense and in your face the whole time, then you can't appreciate the diversity of the tracks. There's some nice brass sections that are interspersed in this song, and it ends with a really interesting sort of mysterious outro that we're actually going to hear a number of times on multiple songs on this album. Next to number 11, we have The Joy with a 7.3. This is another Curtis Mayfield sample, except this one doesn't make me ejaculate. The song has a pretty solid bass line. It's pretty slow and methodical, which is a nice change of pace. I could, however, do without the constant grunting noises. <gasps> Next to number 10, we have Illis Motherfucker Alive with a 7.3. So let's talk about this song. On Spotify, this track has three uninterrupted minutes of silence before the song begins to play. That can't be intentional, so I don't think it's fair for me to deduct any points because of that. That mysterious outro actually begins this song, which is a little bit confusing. The piano is great, but the trap remix snares are a little out of place. Now at number 9, we have Welcome to the Jungle with a 7.4. I would like to first preface this by saying the production on this song sucks. It's literally just one note the entire time. However, the vocals save it, and the little synth part that comes in every so often is really good. Now at number 8, we have Liftoff with a 7.7. I really enjoy this sort of synthy sci-fi intro. Beyonce obviously steals the show with vocals. And I gotta say, Kanye has some pretty nice vocals on this song too. One little thing I enjoy is the subtle at the end of the hook. Just makes the song feel fun. At number seven, we have Why I Love You with an 8.5. This is a pretty decent song that comes after a handful of sort of mediocre ones, so it kind of snuck up on it. It doesn't waste any time building up momentum or anything. This actually has one of my favorite productions on the album. The Mr. Hudson feature sounds great. Call me pleasantly surprised. At number six, we have Gotta Have It with an 8.6. The song has some pretty solid bars and a really nice back and forth between Kanye and Jay-Z. It's got some great samples and I really enjoy the sort of gentle melody. Now at number 5 we have That's My Bitch with an 8.7. The song has seriously grown on me. Kanye's flow is great, the hook is super catchy, and I've never heard of Justin Vernon before, but his little section at the bridge is probably my favorite part of this album. Now at number 4 we have Murder to Excellence with an 8.7. The song has a pretty unexpected guitar track, I really like it. The background choir sort of carries the song even if they're just singing on La. It just feels different from the rest of the production on this album. There's a pretty drastic beat shift halfway through, and I don't typically like those, but this one's okay. At number 3 we have No Church in the Wild with a 9.1. This is the first song on the album, and it's a pretty great opener. There's some seriously iconic lines. I love the strings coupled with the consistent bass and drum line. In my mind, this is like a perfect pre-game song. At number two, we have Otis with a 9.2. I think it's kind of funny that Kanye sampled Otis Redding so much that he needed to be credited as a feature. Other than that, this song has some great bars and a really nice balance between Kanye and Jay-Z. The piano is pretty solid as well. And now at number one, we have Gentleman in Paris with a 9.7. This is kind of the undisputed champion of this album. It's easily one of Kanye's most iconic songs ever. There's some really funny parts, but it keeps a nice balance of not feeling corny. It's a great sing-along, it's provocative, and it gets the people going. And that completes our list. Thanks for watching this edition of Kanye West Ranked. Check out next time where we rank Kanye's next chronological album, Yee This. You won't want to miss it, so consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you can keep up with the series. Thanks again, and have a good one.